I'm Dara Breen. Joining this week are Rhys James, Ellie Taylor and Ed Byrne, Nish Kumar, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. We start tonight with a round called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Ellie, which category would you like? Um, home news, please. OK, home news it is. That's your topic. The answer is three days. What is the question? Is it how long will Theresa May be unemployed for until she starts vlogging? <laughs> Theresa May puts an ice cube in her mouth, how long until it melts? <laughs> oh. Is it how long does every hour of Melania Trump's life feel? <laughs> Is it how many days did I have diarrhea for after I ate some petrol station sushi in 2005? <laughs> Is it, how long was my granddad asleep for before I realised I could now afford a house? <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand, that's quite cold, but also you're making a very strong generational point. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Wait, your granddad's 35. <laughs> <laughs> is it how long Jeremy Corbyn pauses for before he gives his answer about what Labour's position is on Brexit? <laughs> <laughs> is it... For how long did I live rent-free in a stranger's house by pretending I was on the TV show Hunted? <laughs> <laughs> is it in Alabama, how many days after an egg is fertilised does it have more rights than its mum? <laughs> <laughs> is it in the event of a no-deal Brexit, how long will it be before we have to eat Dominic Raab? <laughs> How long would it take before I would be bullied off Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think love is really the right word for what goes on on that island? <laughs> 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 mm. Does anyone have the uh, correct answer? Yeah, what is the 0-60 oh, of a 1975 <laughs> Austin Maxi? <laughs> Um, is it how long did Donald Trump's visit to the UK last? Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Nish Kumar. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes. I love that. The question I was looking for was how long did US President Donald Trump stay in the UK during his state visit? This is the news that Donald Trump and his family visited Britain this week. His trip included a state banquet at Buckingham Palace and a commemorative event for the 75th anniversary of D-Day. How do you think it all went? I was amazed he brought his whole family because he seemed to bring one child that no one had ever heard of. <laughs> Tiffany. Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany, yeah. Who yeah. is Tiffany? She sang, I think we're alone now. <laughs> <laughs> and for that... She's, she's for changed that. a lot since then. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the daughter. She, he doesn't want to shag, I think. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, are you, are you offended? Oh, not me. No, are you offended because you think he does want to shag? <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany. Prop, prop to Tiffany. <laughs> but he didn't mean the entire family. I mean, because he left Baron at home, uh, presumably in a home alone type situation, because <laughs> and mother and all of the family. So it's just Baron being in the White House while Joe Pesci's <laughs> trying climbing up a ladder. <laughs> Baron's there in his arsenal jumper just trying to like, swing a pot of paint yeah. against him or something. I think we missed an opportunity, though, because we, we know how he likes to welcome people to America, so we should possibly have uh, given him a full body search kept him waiting for six hours and then separated him from his children. That would have been... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Hugh, he, he did fly into Stansted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's some yeah. of humanity. Yeah. Uh... I love that he flew into Stansted and then had to go to Portsmouth. It's like the yeah. shittest stag do ever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's interesting because when he was asked about it that he said he saw no protests. He saw one tiny protest, but the rest of it, everybody very happy to see him. We're all waving American flags. We're waving them so hard, some of them went on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it's but... been proof that the army's in trouble, isn't it? Because it's a royal gun salute and they all missed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do before he even arrived? 
Oh, oh. he's like Josh said he can't. I mean, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like his phone has one of these kind of proximity things that when he, when the phone found 3G again, uh, it went, <laughs> oh, you're in London, and then an alert comes on and go, insult Sadi Khan, uh, and he banged out a quick one on, well, the, on the... You that... think that that, you know, that massive... <laughs> banged out a quick one, Darren. Banged out a quick tweet. <laughs> Banged out a quick tweet. I think you said one, though. You said one, uh, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, one, one yeah. meaning one tweet. I think you tweet. really needed to say tweet quick, rather than one, one. One tweet. What yeah. do you think what, what, I what, you, what, Do you need me to explain what I think they thought you meant? Yes. You said, <laughs> In this business. I'm sorry, are we all sat here assuming that he's not masturbated on Air Force One? <laughs> <laughs> What special car did uh, Trump bring over with him? The Beast. The Beast? It was the Beast. What's the Beast? The... He's never going to get that into the OOLED zone, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he's going to have to leave it on the Euston Road and get a Boris bike. It would be very, very satisfying. I love that he had to bring a car that can withstand, like, grenades and bombs, when really all we've got is milkshake. Milkshake, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, he's going to keep it up with this. He's not being keeping abreast of what happened. Really it not. just needs loads of windscreen wipers. <laughs> <laughs> Every surface needs to be a yeah. windscreen wiper uh, just to get rid of milkshake. And you think he's got all And by the sounds of it, from the inside as well. Uh... <laughs> he's got... I love all the um, the gift exchanges. They're quite because he gave the Queen gave him a book like that is a burn, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. The only well thumbed thing in Trump's library is the nanny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how did Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn react to Trump's visit? Corbyn has really picked a side over Trump. If only he could do that with Brexit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he boycotted the banquet, didn't he, Corbyn? Yeah. Not like him to not turn up to something, is it? But he, <laughs> he boycotted it. He goes, yeah, it's not, it's not your scene. Like, he's so clearly the sort of guy, we don't have to go out for a posh dinner, we've got a perfectly good butternut squash at home. <laughs> In fairness, though, the way he gets treated by the British press, if he'd gone, they'd have just had a photograph of him going, so-called socialist, gorgeous himself, yes. at White Tie Ball. <laughs> so he can't win, really, can he, uh, to be fair? I think he can't win, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> First thing Trump did when he arrived was meet the Queen. Here they are, meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice thing to put on his formal wear tutu. That was nice. <laughs> I like to imagine she's going, Oh, you arrived at Stansted, did you? That was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> Why does she need a handbag? She's in her own garden. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's why she's carrying her mace in case she tries yeah. to stop him. <laughs> I feel like she's just hanging on to him, just going, Philip, 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 this is the shade of orange I wanted to do in the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I was her, I would have worn an outfit made out of American flags because he thinks you should respect the American flags. So it would have confused him. It's like you're a woman. But I feel compelled to respect you. It would, <laughs> what completely blow his mind, I'd wear a Stars and Stripes burqa. <laughs> <laughs> if you just focus on the front bit of the jacket, it looks like he's got the most obscene boner in history. <laughs> 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 See it. Oh, you can't see it now. <laughs> Look, none of us have met the Queen. We don't know what it's like. <laughs> In other news, who was expelled from the Labour Party recently? Alistair Campbell. Yes, Alistair Campbell. Why? He was expelled because he voted Lib Dem in the EU elections. He's been expelled from the Labour Party like being expelled from school. Is Alistair Campbell going to turn up outside the gates of Labour on a BMX? <laughs> <laughs> Smoking a cigarette yeah. going, I got up at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> what gets me is that he got expelled for voting Lib Dem, but there's been people who've done way worse things who are part of the Labour uh, Party and haven't got expelled. So um, John Prescott's son got, um, uh, despite allegations of sexual harassment, including an instance where a woman rejected him and he allegedly shat on the floor in protest. <laughs> 
which yeah. is actually a metaphor for yeah. Jeremy Corbyn's views on Brexit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yet he's allowed to stay in, but this guy... Uh, uh, uh. He shat on the floor! <laughs> uh, honestly, I think legally we have to give this story ten minutes. Um, <laughs> by which I mean... Legally, he has denied the allegation, and it's very difficult to DNA these things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, therefore, we can An allegation was made, but we cannot definitely say, and he has denied it. Why is the top of the pillar that he's leaning on made of sponge cake? <laughs> <laughs> he's also being attacked by three tiny soldiers wearing those... <laughs> Considering how low down those microphones are, they just assume he's talking out his arm. Add in that round, the points go to Ed, Ellie and Reese. Yes! 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 Come on, Ed. Now, we play a round called Look at the State Visit of That. <laughs> this <laughs> game involves Reese James and Angela Barnes. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched the wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first subject is relationships. Hello. I, uh, I, I have a boyfriend. Um, thanks. <laughs> it's, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's fine. I used to... I was single for a really long time. I thought I was going to be one of those women who just dies alone at home with a cat eating her face. That's what I thought. <laughs> happen because I won't have a cat. <laughs> if I want shit in my kitchen, I'll do it myself. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he's very good looking, my fellow, like proper good looking. Out of my league, good looking. Now I know you think I'm biased saying that. I'll tell you how I know for a fact he's out of my league, good looking. That's because every time I've introduced him to a friend for the first time, the minute he leaves the room, they'll turn to me and go, How the hell did you do that? <laughs> Charming, isn't it? What are his friends saying to him? Are you alright? <laughs> Like, he's very fit and athletic and sporty, and I'm not sporty. I don't even watch sport. I, don't, I once got tricked into going to Wimbledon because my friend told me it was a men's singles event. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. cool, cool. It used to worry me. It used to worry me that he's so much hotter than me. But, you know, we've been together five years now. If he is doing it for a bet, he's really committed to winning it. So... <laughs> When we met, I was 37 when I met my fella. Now, I think it's good to meet someone a bit older in life, you know, when you know what you want. Like, it's proved controversial when I've said this before, but I don't trust childhood sweethearts. <laughs> now, I'm sure if you are one, you'll be fine. I just think they're the same people who go on game shows and don't gamble for the big prize. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lovely day. You'll do. <laughs> Million people on this planet. What are the chances your ideal one sat behind you in maths? Really? <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. Okay, that leaves us with Reese. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is philosophy. <laughs> I feel like people who say everything happens for a reason have never shit themselves on public transport. <laughs> I love these phrases, I love the way people use these phrases now to be deep. The other day, we went to a friend's house. She had this poster, this, like, framed print of this phrase that said, life is about the journey, not the destination. And I was like, obviously. <laughs> the destination is death. <laughs> Otherwise, that just says, life is about death. <laughs> that's a bit heavy for your downstairs bathroom, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Heard this one the other day, heard someone say, don't have regrets, you mustn't have regrets, because whatever you did was, at one point, exactly what you wanted. I was like, so? I'm an idiot. At one point, I paid for the crazy frog ringtone. I don't know shit. <laughs> at one point, I bought a little chair for my old Nokia mobile phone. My judgement <laughs> is abysmal. At one point, I sucked on the breast of my own mother. Doesn't mean I don't regret New Year's Eve 2012, people change. <laughs> The way that karma has been hijacked by so many young people does my head and all these young people all the time going, yeah, I believe in karma, I live my life by karma, because I believe if you do good things, good things will happen to you. So that's why I do good things, so that good things will happen to me, and I think, well, then you're a piece of shit. <laughs> to do a good deed. Who lives their life like that, constantly looking back, analysing, seeing if their good deed paid off and they got something good in return? You know, who's getting a promotion at work thinking, oh, that because I gave that bad old pair of trainers to Oxfam last week? <laughs> you know, who's getting a hand job thinking, oh, that because I helped that old lady cross the street? <laughs> 
That's not karma. That's just a very grateful old lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you very much. Points there go to Angela. Well done. Thank you very much. Our next item is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical mm. image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So what is going on here? <laughs> oh, I can't believe I've been photographed wearing this helmet, says Cycle Hat. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> no one calls this a cycle hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better put on my cycle hat to keep my, to keep my brain dome from breaking. <laughs> I also love the fact that he's clearly trying to style out the fact that he is not at his house and is very lost. <laughs> <laughs> he's messed up so many relationships. He's lived in so many different... That bag is just full of front door keys. <laughs> <laughs> this is how different Budget Day will look if Boris ever becomes Chancellor of the Exchequer. When people say he's got the Tory leadership election in the bag, is this the bag they're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's heard that cycling reduces your sperm count and he's just desperate not to have any more illegitimate children. <laughs> <laughs> you just know that whoever took that picture just went, Oi, wanker! Uh, you looked. Yeah. <laughs> you want the actual answer? Yeah, go you? on, what the hell? I think... <laughs> <laughs> ..that's Boris Johnson. <laughs> Yes, this is former Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, who is the front-runner in the race to become Tory leader. At the time of recording, Johnson was one of 11 candidates vying to replace Theresa May as leader of the Conservative Party when she leaves in July. So, have you been following the leadership race? It's like Game of Thrones with fewer dragons and more tits. <laughs> I have personally upset two out of 11 of those people. And Which try one? harder. Who have you upset? <laughs> I mean, well, I, yes, uh, Dominic Raab, uh, he mistook me for a different brown person uh, in the green room of Question Time, which is a concern for me if he becomes Prime Minister, apart from the fact that it's not, because he doesn't know which one I am, and he's going to end up <laughs> deporting Ramesh. Um, <laughs> and Sajid Javid, I was asked to introduce him at a benefit, and I introduced him by saying, please welcome, with no applause, a representative of a government who's fundamentally ruined this country. <laughs> Because where were any of you at the British Asian Small Businessman of the Year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where were you? <laughs> I was there, where I was there. Uh, no, wait, is what? That, uh, is that for men who run small businesses or for small <laughs> <Yeah>. businessmen? <laughs> Given the average height of <clears> the <throat> average Asian man, <laughs> both. <laughs> People have been uh, complaining that there's only two female candidates. And mm. as a feminist, I'd like to say good. Um, because some jobs just aren't feminist, mm. are they? And I think Tory leader might just be one of them. It's like, I'm also pleased there's not many female serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm going, oh, say what you like about Rose West, but she did make it in a man's world. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it mad that Boris is just a man who once hosted a comedy panel show and soon he is going to be the leader of this country? Dara, you have wasted your power. <laughs> <laughs> You've had all this power built up and you just used it to make robots fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a long game, mate. Yeah. I'm playing a long game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, around Dominic Rock. Dominic Rock was the Brexit secretary. He's already tried to negotiate it and now he says he's going to go back and do it again. It, what? In a disguise? What's going <laughs> on? How did Rory Stewart cause a stir this week? Because he looks like a haunted Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, I tell you what, they, they say you get more right wing as you get older. I never thought it'd happen to Bez from Happy Monday. <laughs> <laughs> We're all burying the lead here. Reese oh. James from the future has come <laughs> back to warn past Reese James. <laughs> 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 It's if Reese hadn't been inflated to his proper pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a 22 PSI yeah. Reese James. That's what he is. Ironically enough, he looks like me if I had done opium. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what he, he, he he's, he's does. Yeah, he, it he is a done... genuinely a refreshingly new scandal to I mean, let's them. get that off the screen, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> 
um, Roy Stewart uh, got involved, we had to uh, apologise for having an opium, which is just so fantastically <laughs> 19th <laughs> century. Uh, is, yeah, he, and where did he do the opium? On a night out with Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well have been. Uh, no, at a wedding. At a wedding. At a wedding in Iran. He was at a wedding and an opium pipe was passed around. But he also tried to justify it by going, oh, well, the family I did it with was so poor, there was probably hardly any opium in it. You're <laughs> 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 not really getting him out by poverty shaming the people who gave it to you. <laughs> but Jeremy Hunt came out as well and said that he wanted to do a bit of one-upmanship and Jeremy Hunt said that he had had a cannabis lassie. Yes. But he was also on holiday. It's just so Tory, isn't it? It's like, oh, I didn't smoke weed, I had a cannabis lassie. Oh, I didn't do heroin, I did opium. Even when doing drugs, they sound like they got them from M&S. <laughs> <laughs> cannabis lassie sounds a little bit unfair on the dog. <laughs> What's that, cannabis lassie? What's that? What's that? Is it in the well? Bark. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, in other news, who suffered an unexpected defeat this week? AJ. Anthony Joshua. Are you, big, are you a boxing fan? Are you... Yeah, I am a boxing fan, particularly as of this week, because the guy who beat Anthony Joshua is frankly a role model to men whose body type can best be described as very into Marvel films. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy Ruiz. Until I saw this photograph, I didn't think you'd be able to carry off a chest tattoo. <laughs> 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 Everyone's calling him fat. Front. I mean, everyone's got, I mean, not to his face, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I know that boxing's not just about athleticism, but you no. didn't expect Joshua to lose to the little boy from Up. <laughs> <laughs> And, and by, by beating him, actually, Andrew Ruiz uh, won all three of Joshua's belts, mm. which is what he needs. Uh, <laughs> get me doing the fat jokes in a second! At the end of that round, points go to Anthony Hewitt Nish! I love that moment. <laughs> Now we come <coughs> to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK. <laughs> Here we go. The first subject is... <coughs> unlikely lines from a thriller. We've got the girl. You can have her if you give us the money. OK, but this is the rudest dating agency I've ever used. <laughs> The missiles are heading for us, Prime Minister. We need a decision now. Thank you. <laughs> He's putting it to the party conference in October. <laughs> Welcome to my haunted mansion. If these walls could talk, I'd almost certainly have masturbated less. <laughs> a shark from Jaws has spawned. It's baby shark do 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 do. <laughs> Hand me that gun and that magazine. There's a really good article in it on how to use this gun. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a message from the kidnappers. They said that if I hand over Aunt Esther, they'll give us back the children. Yes, it's an Esther ransom. <laughs> Agent Jones, I need you to follow him as closely as you can. I'll be right behind you. Yeah, in fact, I know how a conga works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still there. Yep. I wish I'd never been to that perfume counter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who you are, I will find you and I will kill you or someone of a similar racial profile. <laughs> <laughs> I have a shot. I have a shot. I can take the shot. Do I have permission to fire? I have the shot. No, for the last time, our job is to protect President Trump. <laughs> a new name and a new identity. No. I'm afraid that's not possible, Mrs May. <laughs> I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Oh, he's refused it. 
well, then I'll make the offer again uh, and again, <laughs> and then everyone's going to make me quit. Theresa May in The Godfather. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to hand in your badge. A Blue Peter presenter cannot be caught wanking in the garden. <laughs> no, this bag stays with me at all times. It contains items that are very special to me. My testicles. <laughs> My ass is on the line here. Would you like me to take it down so you can hang the washing up? Just when I thought the case couldn't get any worse, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a name! Give me a name! The christening is in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? No, sorry, Romesh, you just got a lazy eye. It's quite hard to tell who you are. <laughs> Okay, the next topic is. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear at an award show. Well, ironically, the winner of the best German sausage is the first. <laughs> and here's a tribute to all the people who haven't died yet, but I really hope they do. <laughs> And the award for clearest example that TV commissioners have run out of ideas goes to Comedy Central for Darrow Brin's Blockbusters. <laughs> Those kids deserve to be on the telly as much as anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Tonys. If you're not called Tony, fuck off. <laughs> The winner of Freestyle Rapper of the Year is Nish Kumar. Oh, uh, my name is Nish, and I'm here. I sh should have written it down. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the National Car Key Awards. But first, let's take a look at some of the keys we have lost this year. <laughs> and the winner of most drawn out pause at an award ceremony goes to. <laughs> And now we come on to the Balloon Door, the most coveted award here at this year's National Balloon Award. <laughs> and now for Satnav of the Year. And I can honestly say, without this Satnav, I would not be where I am today. <laughs> and now we move to the in memoriam section of the evening, or as it's now to be known, the ones who didn't turn out to be pedos. <laughs> and the Duke of Edinburgh Award for driving this year goes to Ant McPartlin. <laughs> The Uber driver of the year will be here in four minutes. <laughs> and there we have it, the winner of Saudi Thief of the Year. Please, give him a hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's me! <laughs> Wow, I'll tell you, this statuette's going right up my husband on a get home. <laughs> I bet to darling! <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of the Origami Award goes to. <laughs> well, I don't mind telling you, I have got a lump in my throat. This is the Medical Misdiagnosis Award. <laughs> And 
that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Reese James, Eddie Taylor, and Edmund. Commiserations, Anish Kumar, Hugh Dennis, and Angela Barnes. Thanks for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Alice James and John Robbins fill your Friday afternoons with big laughs. Download the BBC Sounds app to listen live from one. Here on BBC Two, John Richardson and Jessica Hines get topical with Ramesh and the Rangamation in 45 minutes. That's after Newsnight coming next.